Welcome to The Third Degree. My name is Sule Prince, and I'm here with Dr. Tony Costa. Dr. Costa, what is the significance of Easter in Christianity, and why is it the most important date in the Christian calendar? Well, the time of Easter, of course, is the central, the fundamental uh, festivity or the fundamental time in the Christian year that establishes Christianity in its own right. Uh, it is much more important than Christmas. Uh, the Christmas stories would be meaningless if we're not for the Easter event. And so the Easter event is the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. And what mm -hmm. distinguishes the event of the resurrection of Jesus, which is something that is seriously being taken right mm -hmm. now, not just now, but more so in scholarship than any other time. And that is the evidences that we have for this event. What distinguishes the resurrection of Jesus from everything else, from all other world religions, is that all other world religions maintain that their founders lived, that they taught certain doctrines, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they all agree that they died yes. and they stayed dead. Mm -hmm. But the Christian faith is the only one that maintains that its founder was raised from the dead and is alive today, still lives and lives forever. And therefore, the Christian faith, unlike other religions, other religions can exist without their founders, as is evident when we look at world religions today. Mm -hmm. They continue without their founders. The Christian faith also is not so much based on a standard set of teachings or ethical teachings or the parables of Jesus and so forth. If the resurrection of Jesus did not occur, the New Testament says that Christianity is the biggest sham in the world. Definitely. If Christ mm -hmm. did not rise from the dead, mm -hmm. then Christianity is not only a hoax, but Christians are the most deluded people in the world to believe this. And you and I would be fools to yes. believe this and to follow it. And so in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, if Christ is not raised, then your faith is futile and you have no hope. So Christianity bets everything on the resurrection of yes. Jesus. It stands or falls on this one point. If Jesus did not rise from the dead, then Christianity is the biggest delusion that this world has ever seen. And therefore, the faith of millions would be at stake here if Jesus did not rise from the dead. Mm -hmm. And and hence, um, the Christian faith started because of this event. Well, while other religions started through the teachings of their prophets and gurus and sages and enlightened teachers and so forth, the Christian faith would not have started if Jesus did not rise from the dead. If yes. Jesus died on the cross, which is virtually accepted by all historians today, if Jesus died on the cross and was simply buried, that would have been the end of the Christian mm -hmm. movement there and then. And it would have just ceased to exist. We would not have heard of a Christian movement today. What's, what spurred the Christian movement was the event of the resurrection of Jesus. Yes. And therefore, if the resurrection of Jesus happened, then that means the ramifications for the world is immense. Mm -hmm. And what that also means is that every human being on the planet is going to have to deal with this mm -hmm. because it's the risen Christ himself who will judge the nations. And therefore, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, then we might as well just continue as we've done. It doesn't really matter if we live a life like a Mother Teresa or an Adolf Hitler, because at the end, it really doesn't matter. Mm -hmm, yes. We're all going to end in the grave anyway. Death's going to welcome us with open arms at yes. the end. Therefore, it doesn't matter. But if Jesus did rise from the dead, then the consequences of that is that there is life after death yes. and that this life has meaning, that it's not a meaningless existence. Yes. And therefore, Christ brings purpose to the world and so forth. And therefore, this is why this is the most important time in the Christian calendar. And this is why it's the most joyous time yes. in the Christian calendar. Because they realize that because Jesus lives, we shall live also. Mm -hmm. And our loved ones who are, who are gone, who, who've passed on, the Bible says that if Christ did not rise from the dead, then uh, there is no hope for the dead. Mm -hmm. The dead are lost. But if Christ did rise from the dead, then that means everything he taught was true. And therefore, what he saw, said about himself is true. And therefore, what he said about life after death is true. Yeah. And therefore, we can rest in that hope that if Jesus Christ is who he said he was, and he vindicated and confirmed it by his resurrection, then we have everything to, to uh, we, we can stake our whole lives on him. Yes. And that's what gives us great peace. And historically, we know that there are many people that claim to be messiahs. And they had disciples, 
mm-hmm. and when they either died or were persecuted somehow, the disciples just attached themselves to other messiahs. Correct. Where this Correct. is different. Correct. So what we find in in um, in early messianic movements is one of two things would happen. You would have somebody claiming to be a messiah, and he would lead a movement, mm-hmm. a revolution against Rome and so forth. And what would happen is if they were killed in battle, um, one of two things would happen. Either the group would simply disband yes. and just cease to exist, or they would find another messianic leader and follow him. Mm-hmm. But what's interesting about Christianity is that the leader of the movement dies by crucifixion, which incidentally is a uh, an insulting death. Yes. It, it is a, an embarrassing death because under Jewish law, crucifixion was seen as a sign of judgment from yes. God. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 23 says, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. And therefore, the idea of a crucified Messiah was an oxymoron to mm-hmm. first century Jews. That's why they had difficulty believing in Jesus as the Messiah. How could he be crucified? That is a, a, a death of, of the accursed and so forth. And, and therefore, with the Christian movement, the disciples of Jesus would have done one of two things. Either they would have just disbanded or they would have looked for another messianic leader. Mm-hmm. But what is interesting is that they didn't abandon Jesus. They proclaimed Jesus and actually proclaimed him alive from the dead. Yeah. And this is what really started the Christian movement was the resurrection of Jesus. And that's why all of his followers went to their deaths as martyrs, yeah. willingly dying with the confession on their lips that Jesus yeah. is Lord. Because who died for a lie? Exactly. So if you know something is, is patently false, mm-hmm. if something is a lie, nobody in their right mind would, would stake yeah. their lives on a lie. Yeah. People only give their lives for causes that they believe are noble. They believe they're true. Mm-hmm. So people go to war to fight for their countries. They yes. know that there's a chance they're going to die. But they'll do that because mm-hmm. it's for a noble cause for their country. Or they will die for their children to protect their children or, or their wives or their husbands and so forth. And therefore, our lives are precious and are valuable. And people don't just give up their lives easily. Yes. Now, if someone dies for a lie, well, we would look at them as one of the biggest fools in history. Definitely. No one dies for that, which is yeah. truly false. So the idea that the disciples would concoct this idea that Jesus was miraculously raised from the dead, and then they go to their deaths knowing that lie, it goes against logic and goes against reason. Yes.